Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Tuesday, April 29th, 2014, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's what's coming up tonight. Tonight, the White House calls for Chinese-style internet censorship. Then, anti-immigration leaflets spark calls for hate crime charges. And the Senate refuses to reveal the official numbers of drone strike victims. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. Standby technicians watching and high-fiving while you and your family's car is shot up by drone robot control 50 cal. Testing is set to begin next month on a pilot program that could lead to the introduction of a Chinese-style internet ID system. Now, we've reported on this before, we've said it's coming, and so it begins. Now, the White House's National Strategy for Trusted Identities in Cyberspace, it'll replace the current system of using passwords to access sensitive online accounts. It'll be using something more akin to a biometric ID card. It'll link one individual to all of their government services like welfare and food stamps, as well as a myriad of other things like any mortgage applications and applications for licenses. Now, if successful, it could pave the way for an interoperable authentication protocol that would work from any website, from your Facebook account to your health insurance company. Now, back when the NSTIC plan was first introduced, CNET's Declan McCullough noted that it represented the virtual equivalent of a national ID card because it'll eventually be mandatory to use for filing any IRS tax returns, applying for benefits, or renewing licenses. And of course, we've reported about the Trans-Pacific Partnership creating an internet police who will basically have the authority to shut down entire websites as well as delete any content and censor information that it sees as threatening. So presumably, these same people could authorize your accessing the internet at all. If they deem you to be a domestic terrorist, they just might decide to cut off your access altogether, seeing as how it's a privilege granted by the state. Just look at what's happening in Russia. They are also cracking down on internet dissent. This happened very quickly today. Russia's upper house of parliament approved a law that will impose stricter rules on blogs and websites that attract more than 3,000 daily visits. Opponents say the law will enable Putin to silence any opponents who are rarely given airtime on their mostly state-controlled or pro-Putin television channels. And according to a prominent Russian blogger, the new policy is to restrict free information exchange and restrict express expression of opinion, be that in written text, speech, or video. And of course, this is what we see going on in China as well, which is what they are trying to push here for America. Now, according to Putin, the internet is a CIA project. And of course, that's why he's doing this. Now, he isn't wrong to have any concern over that, but it's clear that this is more about cracking down on dissent. And of course, that's what is being pushed here for America as well. And the government, they are going to get it via, you know, be it axing net neutrality or by just completely cutting off any access to the internet by creating this online ID that you have to apply for and be approved for in order to access information because that is the problem. They know that knowledge is power and they don't want you to have access to all of the information that's out there on the internet. That's why the drone strike issue is such a huge hot button for them. The Senate has even agreed with the intelligence chief James Clapper on this. They agreed that the American people should not know the number of people that are killed by U.S. drone attacks overseas, nor should they hope to understand the circumstances under which such lethal killings are authorized or executed. Now, U.S. senators removed a provision from a major intelligence bill that originally required the president to issue an annual public report clarifying the total number of combatants and non-combatant civilians that are killed or injured by drone strikes in the previous year. But Senate leaders removed this language because they're preparing to bring the bill to the floor for a vote. And at the behest of James Clapper, he assured them in a recent letter that the Obama administration was looking for its own ways to disclose more about its highly controversial drone strikes. So now they've got to figure out what kind of spin they can put on the murdering of innocent civilians in other countries. So, 
you know, these people, they may or may not pose an active threat to our national security, but, you know, we don't know because there's no transparency in that either. Now, Zeke Johnson of Amnesty International said, it's stunning that after all these years, we still don't know how many people the Obama administration has killed with drones. Now, there are some other independent websites out there. I know there's a Twitter account that tries to publish the account of, you know, in newspapers, they might say how if their civilians were killed in drone strikes. And that's really the only access people have to any of that information. We're not going to obviously be getting it from the Obama administration, you know, the most transparent administration ever as we were promised. But of course, they they realize that if we do see how many people are actually being killed with this lethal weaponry, these unmanned drones, we would be outraged. There would be a lot of concern there. And not to mention the fact that it is the very killing of innocent people in these other countries that are just is causing more people to join Al Qaeda and to join these groups that are anti-USA that, you know, hate us for our freedom. And we are allowing our government to create that. Now, what's going to happen when these countries get drones? Are we going to have the same sort of casual reaction when innocent children are killed on our streets here in America? Now, according to analysts, they predict that in less than a decade's time, the United States will spend less than half the global total on drone research and development. Asia in particular is expected to surge ahead and South Korea is set to produce suicide drones. And now all the countries, all the countries are getting in on drones now. They all want them. Major world powers are expected to have much larger drone fleets by 2022 and unmanned systems could make up 50% of the aircraft of some militaries by 2030, according to data. War is peace, y'all. And the major players, they all just want the biggest, baddest equipment with which to drop all of those love bombs down on all of our heads. So thank you, U.S. government, creating a lot of enemies for us worldwide. Now, just like Congress wants to withhold the drone strike death numbers, they don't want to, um, you know, let us know the high cost of some of the other programs of the Obama administration. That's why they've delayed the Obamacare mandates into going into effect until after the election so that voters won't be able to take their frustrations out at the polls. And now the GOP has accused the EPA of doing the exact same thing, delaying their major climate rules as well until after the election. And this time they say that they lied about it. The EPA published its so-called new source performance standard for power plants in early January, which was more than two months after it was submitted to the Federal Register. And that was even before the EPA announced that the standard, which would effectively ban coal-fired power plants, they announced that in late September. So this is months, months past. And the EPA chief, Gina McCarthy, told lawmakers she published the new rules in a timely manner. Now, Republicans, they want to know why, because they allege that the delay in publishing the NSPS was politically motivated, arguing that the Obama administration's actions will push the finalizing of the costly rule until after the elections this fall, thereby lessening the impact of the president's environmental policies, much like he is trying to lessen the impact of some of his other policies. Now, why are they doing this? Why is this going to be something that's going to possibly cost the election coming up? Because the EPA's policies will result in the shutdown of coal-powered plants, resulting in a 150 percent increase in the price for natural gas, and that will be accompanied by a 7 percent rise in electricity prices. That's according to government data. Now, what we're seeing now is like the average natural gas prices at about 344 BTU in 2012. That's going to rise upwards to six dollars by 2025. This would boost retail electricity rates for households by 7%. Now, as even more coal plants are going to be shut down, gas and power prices will drive even higher by 2040. Natural gas prices will increase 150% over their 2012 levels and a 22% higher increase for retail power prices. 
Now, a number of coal plants are set to retire in April, which is troubling news for regulators who say that if we continue to experience these extreme weather conditions like we had last year with the polar vortex, we could be experiencing blackouts, rolling blackouts nationwide. Now, states already were not prepared to supply natural gas to homes. Next year could be even worse. So it doesn't really do us a lot of good to just push back these mandates and to delay the effects of these failed policies. Basically, it's just rendering us unable to prepare ourselves to respond in a timely fashion and to be prepared for a pending energy crisis. Now, much like many of this current administration's policies, we're just going to have to wait and see. Now, something else we're going to have to wait and see what the long-term effects will be is long-term exposure to electromagnetic frequencies. Now, it's everywhere. We're constantly being attacked. We've got Wi-Fi. We've got cell phone towers. Now we're going to have RF frequency of smart meters attached to our homes, and there's even a new, new wave of smart meters coming, even bigger and better, supposedly. So... We are the long-term test subjects. We are the test subjects that are experiencing this technology for the first time. We have no idea how this is going to play out. Cancer from cell phone use doesn't typically appear until decades afterward. So I'm gonna be speaking with Dr. David Carpenter. He is gonna be speaking with us to dispel a lot of the myths surrounding these so-called scientific studies. There's a lot of misinformation out there and he says that the notion that there are no risks posed by this constant barrage of electromagnetic frequency is false and that we should all be very concerned, especially our children. So that is coming right up after this. From the water table to our soils to the atmosphere itself, our world is becoming more and more toxic each and every day. But it's not just the air outside that's toxic. Indoor air has been shown to have two to five times higher concentrations of pollutants than even outdoor air. And most Americans spend 90% of their time inside using toxic chemicals within their homes. There are more than 42 million smokers in the United States. Well over a thousand types of mold and mildew linked to numerous conditions. And don't forget the fact that six million Americans live with pets they're allergic to as well. When I began to research these statistics, it was clear to me it was time to start cleansing my lungs in order to combat the toxic environment that we cannot escape but that we can fight back against. Made with organic and wild cultivated herbs and manufactured in the USA, the new InfoWars Life Lung Cleanse is here in a convenient spray bottle that can be brought with you throughout any toxic environment. Now available exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. A chemical spill contaminating the water supply in nine West Virginia counties. This year alone, over 300,000 people in West Virginia had their drinking water contaminated. What are the health effects of having these drugs in our drinking water? It's forced medical treatment without the consent of residents. My friends, water filtration is one of the most basic actions you can take to protect you and your family from the harmful toxins and heavy metals in your tap water. On average, the county says it sprays with the glyphosate at least once a week. Few filters cut out the glyphosate that is found in water supplies worldwide. Remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, hydrofluorosilicic acid, sodium hexafluorosilicate. Fluoride it is in tea, it's in coffee, it's in water, it's in bread, it's in toothpaste. It is our responsibility to protect our families. The establishment's not going to do it. It's time to take action. It's time to filter our water. For a limited time, use the promo code WATER15 and get 15% off on all ProPure systems at InfoWarsStore.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. In this day and age, we are facing a constant barrage of electromagnetic frequency. It's all around us, from citywide cell towers to Wi-Fi in every classroom. Now we've got RF pulsating smart meters attached to our homes that we can't opt out of. And we're really being sold on all of the benefits that this advance in technology is going to have, but there isn't a lot of research into the risks. Now joining me today is Dr. David Carpenter.